Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and we're at the computer and we're in the room with the rig and we've got our Mod Scenes DMX hoists here, okay? And what we're going to do is talk about the basics of DMX programming with the Mod Scenes hoist. Then I think we're going to take it to another level and over on the Learn Stage Lighting Onyx channel, we're going to use the Dialos Pixel Mapper, uh, the pixel mapping function inside of Onyx, not to pixel map the tubes. I mean, we've been doing that the whole time. That's like, you know, base level stuff uh, in Onyx. But we're going to show you how you can use the Dialos Pixel Mapper built into Onyx to actually create movements with pixel tubes or with these Mod Scenes DMX hoists uh, using the Pixel Mapper instead of just the regular effects, okay? The basics of DMX with the Mod Scenes hoist. Uh, if you're here, um, hopefully you've already watched our review and our how to set them up video about the Mod Scenes hoist. It's going to walk you through how to get them addressed, how to get them set up, how to go ahead and get them rocking and rolling so that um, you don't have any issues with uh, the implementation, with running the, the wires out and having to respool them or anything like that. We want you to be happy. Okay, then Grab your DMX chart. Uh, Mod Seeds actually sends this with the hoist. And we're going to see no matter what DMX mode you do, whether you get the pixel tubes, the regular, whatever, there are two DMX channels for the movement of these hoists. And Mod Seeds does a good job describing it, but I'm also going to describe it here. Okay, the first channel, if I grab uh, one of my pixel hoists here, is going to be, I put it under beam effects in Onyx. Um, I believe that's where they put it, is you have lift control and you have speed control, or they call it motor journey and motor speed, okay? With motor journey, 0% is the top of the hoist, okay? So when you see those guys come all the way up to the top and hit their limit, um, that point right now, number three is getting there, number five is heading up to there, okay? Okay, yep, uh-huh, yeah. And so that, when they hit that top point, when they hit that very top point, let's go to the right camera, when they hit that top point, that's DMX zero. Now DMX 255 or 100% is all the way at the bottom. If you have the full height of the hoist, which uh, we're still working out the specs with mod scenes, whether that's a 29 foot or a 30, or 28 foot or a 39 foot, um, if you don't have that much height, the first thing you need to do or you want to do is limit the maximum that these things can go, okay? Because the worst thing that can happen programming in any console, we're in Onyx here, but you could be in any console, is that you take these and you take your lift control from zero all the way up to full and then it just, and it just smashes into the ground and unspools. You don't want that, okay? So depending on what DMX software or console you're using, how this is gonna happen is going to vary. We're in a beta version of Onyx right now that will come out uh, later in 2023, most likely. And what they have is a new window called Offset, okay, which gives you the ability to offset the DMX output. So basically what I did here, for as an example, is these pixel tubes can only go to 4% here in my office uh, in the studio before they smack the ground, okay? And we don't want them to smack the ground. Okay, 4%. So what I did is I went to the offset and I made it negative 96. So in Onyx, um, this is the beta version, this is a new way of doing things. I hit edit, I went to offset on the lifting channel and I took it to negative 96% and then I saved it, okay? That means, that in my main area here, these lifts are only going to move. They're going to do nothing from zero through 96, okay? Or through 95, through 96, doesn't matter. Uh, 97 through 100 or 96 through 100, whichever it is, they're going to send out DMX values of 1% through 4%, and we could convert that into zero to 255. Um, basically, I went and manually found, I just went 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% in Onyx. 
I just scrolled to that and then I went ahead and saved that in there. Okay. So, so I went, you know, I went to 4% and I saw them almost touch the ground because they, they go to about three inches above the ground. That's perfect. And then I saved that as my offset. Other consoles may use like a limit function or you may modify or create a custom fixture profile where the maximum DMX value that can be sent out is equal to the maximum travel you want to give these things before they hit the ground or, or whatever. Okay, maybe you limit them at eight feet above, off the ground so that you don't have to worry about people walking under them. It, it just depends on how your stage is set up and what you're doing ultimately as to what you do there. Okay, so that's the first thing is setting that limit. That is so crucial because the last thing you want to do is go in here, grab a fixture and, you know, send it to full and then watch it go boom and, and smack itself into the ground. And then you've got work even worse. You send a bunch of fixtures into the ground. You might break them, uh, etc. The other channel is the speed. That's the movement speed. Okay. It starts at fastest and it goes to slowest. So let's go ahead real quick. I'm going to stop my cues. Okay. And as you can see, they've now gone and I'm going to go away from me into the front camera and we'll kind of go between that and the screen. They have gone all the way up to DMX zero. So just to prove this point, I'm going to grab my group of my pixel hoist masters. And as you can see here, nothing, nothing, nothing as I increase the lift channel. And then finally, when I hit, I believe it's 96, let me scroll through it. Yeah, when I hit 96, now they actually do something. And they do that something through full where they almost touch the ground. They don't quite, and you probably can't see it on the camera. That's okay. All right, other programming controls on these hoists. You've got the speed. So as I mentioned, speed is fast. And they go from fast to slow. Okay, and this brings up another point that we'll get into in a minute, that for most things, uh, Mod Seas recommends the motors are happiest when you chase from a hard value to another. When you don't smoothly fade between values on the movement, but rather set up your speed control um, as how fast they actually go. So like here, you know, they're going slow, they're halfway traveled, but I could totally midway through change that speed. So that might be something that you just record on your own fader just for speed control and you always just run that around based on how fast you want them to go. That's your choice. Um, but that's what the speed channel does. It's very important. Okay. Uh, in addition to the uh, lift control. Okay. And then of course the fixtures themselves, the actual fixtures are going to have color control. Now, in these, um, you have a main color control on the pixel hoist, okay? So like I've got them at red, and I'll bring them to full, and I actually have, because this is the pixel fixture, I've actually parked the master red, green, and blue as zero, and I'm using only the uh, parts fixtures, so that if I want to dial up a color, I'm only using the part segments. Basically, again, here in Onyx, um, if I'm using the pixel mapper Dylos, it basically sets the master over all the cells um, in the, and it's in the pixel mapper and I can't, I don't think there's a way I can actually separate it so that the pixel mapper doesn't affect the master fixture. So I just parked or manually have it locking those master channels to zero so that I'm only working with the individual pixels here. And then at that point it works like any, any light fixture with RGB. Okay. So I can, you know, I can change colors or maybe I go and I just go to blue and I start building an effect. Right. And now I've got a little chase right across them. You see it on the screen, you see it on the fixtures. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you've worked with lighting before. Okay. And so the pixel tubes obviously have the pixel control. Um, and you know, for a lot of the time, like I was running them here, in the pixel mapper, um, but I do need to give them intensity or give it intensity. Um, and I was running a bunch of pixel mapped content on them. Looks really great. 
okay? But that's not really what we're talking about here because ultimately we cover that other space places. They, they really function just as a regular fixture and if you have the orb or the cube, it's just a single RGB fixture like a PAR or anything like that. Um, but let's talk about programming movement. Okay, because that's where these are really different. So if I go to my pixel hoist master, again, that's my main fixture, then I've got the lift control and the speed control, and those are basically my two parameters. So say I take the lift control and I start to run an effect on them, and actually I followed Mod Scene's instructions, and um, what I want to do is I basically want to set that lift point in Onyx, it works best if you go to the middle of your movement range. So I would go here to like, just get them scrolling until they're about the middle of their movement range, and then go over to effects, okay? There's swing and speed. Scares me when they go flying towards the ground, okay? And that's basically how much they move. Now these, to me, look like they're moving okay on the sine wave. But Mod Scenes does recommend using more of a, a square wave, where it just jumps from one to the other. And then, uh, when you're programming that, basically, your speed control, you're going to want to use just the speed channel. So here they're moving super fast, but then I could slow them down. And if I slow them way down, you'll see here in a minute, I get a smooth moving where it doesn't quite hit the either end of the effect, but if I adjust it just right, I can get them to hit both ends of the effect and they, they just continue moving if you're building that effect, okay? So then, of course, the real fun comes in offsetting them, like so. Oops, I did that on speed though. Have you ever done this before, David? No. <laughs> And then is when you start to get some really interesting shapes, some really interesting looks out of them, right? Um, that's when it gets really cool. And so that's where, um, when I'm programming stuff like this, here's what I found works best. Kind of a, hey, here's the best way to do this. Is I don't like to, I, I like to leave the speed at its fastest and basically find my shape, find my effect. Okay, so you see that happening there. And basically find like an offset that works really well, a pattern that looks cool, and then if I'm gonna record speed control in the queue, I'll dial that in second. Um, I found if you're trying to build a slow effect and you basically start, uh, you slow it way down and then you start messing with the min and max and the speed and all that, I find it just gets really hard to see what you're doing to figure it out. Um, just figure it out at full speed, slow it down, and then you'll be good. Because I mean, at slowest, I mean, gosh, you can get something so slow and chill and majestic. Now, when it comes to programming these guys, here are my top recommendations for, you know, just using them during an event or show, okay? Number one, uh, you want to go ahead and spend some good time just building presets or palettes, whatever your console calls them, where you have different positions. Just like a moving head has different positions that you would program into your console, into palettes, you can program different positions. You know, you can program like a V, an upside down V, an offset, um, a left to right or right to left, a couple random positions. Um, really, you know, even though these only have two DMX channels and really one for the movement, there's a lot of different ways that you can lay them out just in a static position, okay? Then I would go ahead and start building effects. Build effects that look random, effects that look linear, effects that are in between. And when you combine different positions in space, because you don't have to always start effects with them all at the same space, with some slow or fast movement and some different effects options, you'll really create something cool. The biggest things to remember when programming these mod scenes hoists, this is important, is A, set your limits in your console. This is going to be something that generally you're going to have to be in a professional grade console or software in order to actually accomplish. Um, a lot of the consoles we recommend on the intermediate or more basic end aren't going to allow this, but you may be able to adjust the fixture profile to do so, um, in which case that'd be really cool. Um, honestly, I haven't used these in light key yet, but you probably could set up um, a limit in light key and, and have it work out. 
um, but any professional console should give you that ability to do that, to set that limit artificially so that there's nothing, they can, there's a certain level they cannot go above um, in order to, to make that work right. Okay, and then the number two is they really like hard values. They don't like a constant stream of changing DMX data for their position. It's gonna be more steppy, it's gonna be more stuttery. Instead, point A to point B, simple hard chasing effects, and then use the speed control channel, either on a separate fader or in your regular effects queue, in order to set the speed, the actual rate that they're moving at. Do these things and you'll have a lot of fun and be able to make some great things with these mod scenes hoist. Now, if you're looking for DMX hoist, we are your place at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We've got these hoists uh, and we would love to help you get them. So whether you're looking for one, which would be kind of odd, or many, check out the pricing on our site. Feel free to reach out to us for a quote if you're buying a bunch of fixtures. Um, we can combine all the cables you'll need if you need anything else. We would love to help serve you and answer any questions you have. Thank you so much, and we'll see you over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Bye.